college football global imperialism it continues today in australia what's up mate in the land down under we have to play by a couple of rules jump around like a kangaroo only the players with a certified vertical We'll start in playing this one. We gotta move the top receivers and DBs with jump overall to the top of the depth chart, regardless of overall overall. True to the land down under, we'll have to spin a wheel of defeated teams. One loser will get the chance for redemption and we'll be able to challenge the tentative victor of Australia in a best of three matchup, giving him a chance to steal the continent away. On the topic of stealing, remember the team that conquers Australia gets to steal one other player for as many wins as they rack up. That's not all, two campus legends will be joining them in the fray for all out world war. So I need you in the comment section to let me know. Conference USA is hosting relatively a lot of new teams to the FBS, including Kennesaw State, Jacksonville State, New Mexico State, Liberty. These guys are not in college football revamped, so we're going to have to cut the playing field down in half already. We'll get them right in college football 25, but for now it's boom, 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 and boom. It's a little unfortunate for Australia fans hoping for a long tournament because the wheel just happened to land this way. Five teams all have a fair shot at glory. Kicking off game one for Australia supremacy, it's going to start with Middle Tennessee. Determining where the Blue Raiders go, it looks like to the right. And okay, Blue Raiders, Hilltoppers, let's get it. I just realized this might be an imperialism first here in the Global Conquest, playing at original stadiums. But as you can tell, the Blue Raiders have some work to do down by a touchdown against the Hilltoppers. Dudes with the hops are in the lineup right now, and it's not going to matter on that play. As you can tell, Justin Olsen and Javante Sherman can get up. 81 jump apiece. But yeah, they're bottom of the depth chart receivers. Big third and seven here looking to convert. And oh my goodness, you just made a massive mistake. Hilltoppers two the house touchdown they're up by two touchdowns now huge pick six and the hilltoppers are up blue raiders though getting down the field relatively quick going to need to cash in right here to make up for that mistake and they do if you're western kentucky you definitely don't want to get too complacent and there we go first down conversion should seal it and oh boy middle tennessee on a mad dash down to the end zone here with no timeouts left he gets dropped they got into the red zone but i think they're not going to have time to get a snap off here four three two, one. Are they going to be able to get it? They do. Oh my goodness. Here we go. This is for overtime. And yeah, well, that was anticlimactic. The end. Despite the late game heroics there, Western Kentucky is the victor. And yeah, that big pick six, that all about sealed it. Middle Tennessee is going to have to hope for that down under second chance because Western Kentucky is expanding. So let's whip that wheel around the block once more and land on FIU. Sending FIU to the right. Holy moly. Okay, this is rough. Conference USA here is getting decimated some more because FIU doesn't even exist in college football revamp. They were in NCAA 14. However, However, I think the mod team replaced them with a team like Coastal Carolina. So all of a sudden, only one game in, we have three teams remaining. This honestly feels like a fast pass to World War because Louisiana Tech is now on the clock. So I'm not sure this video is going to last very long. And yeah, the arrow's not really pointing at anyone, but it's slightly to the right. So I guess we could argue UTEP. Louisiana Tech has been handing UTEP the business in this one. And yes, I said UTEP. I know we see Salona Beach on the screen, but this is actually UTEP's roster, so hope it's not too immersion breaking. With Conference USA in disarray with all the influx of new teams, I chose to put Salona Beach as the UTEP replacement, so that's exactly why you're seeing what you're seeing right here. Looks like it didn't matter though in this one because Louisiana Tech with another emphasis touchdown. Not supposed to have any dog in the fight, but it does make me a little sad to see Salona Beach sponges getting exposed. But remember, this is Chris Giddings and UTEP, their roster, their team and that touchdown was by Silas Bundy. UTEP fans, please bear with me here. Hank the Tank was actually a quarterback at Boise State before transferring. I don't even know if he's still at Louisiana Tech anymore, is he? Regardless, he does what he's got to do, drains the clock, and that's ball game. They won by 18. Congrats to the Bulldogs. They're going on to the next step. And suddenly we're down to the last two standing. Spinning the wheel to determine who gets home field advantage, the Hilltoppers do. And I'm not going to lie, the Hilltoppers are filthy and Conference USA. Given Louisiana Tech the beatdown of a lifetime and on their 51st pass of the game, that's a big first and goal. That was Caden Veltkamp, the backup quarterback, read option, touchdown. When your back gets blown out this bad, it honestly has to get studied. Like, this is unacceptable. No amount of kangaroo receivers on the offense will save you when you're down by 37 and you throw another pick. Back into the red zone for their ninth trip of the day. They're a pass-heavy offense indeed, and wow, they turn it back over. 
Third and five, Hank, that's Hank, gets blown up. Nowhere. Really, we don't need to see much more in this one. We can see that Western Kentucky is the tentative victor of Australia. Up by 30 with a minute 20 to go. They go gun empty, still throw into the very end and get to first and 15. Seriously, I can't hate on it. I mean, the backup wants his reps too, and he's making the most. That will do it here in this one. So Western Kentucky has a date in the championship game. And my goodness, Austin Reed opened up a can. Activating the down under rule, we're spinning the wheel of losers in and this team, and it's gonna be Louisiana Tech, they're gonna to have to go into a best of three series with Western Kentucky. So Louisiana Tech on the outside looking to get back in and steal this continent, they're gonna to have to win best two of three. We are literally witnessing deja vu all over again. Western Kentucky beat down. Louisiana Tech seriously has no answers at all for the Hilltoppers as he just gets in the end zone once more. Fourth and 13 down by 28. The homies just punting again. So I think we can call it wraps. Game one in the books. Kentucky up. Game two in the three game series. Looks like Louisiana Tech decided to strap on the boxing gloves and fight. Only down by two at the moment. If they can cash in, they'll get the lead. Third and one, Hank dropping back. He finds his open man here, and that's first and goal. First and goal, here we go. Up the middle, touchdown. The RB is in. Honestly, for a while, it was looking like Western Kentucky was going to be a powerhouse. And heck, maybe they still are. It's just that right now, they're not dominating like every other game. Davion on that last snag has the most hops in this roster, and uh, that's a first down by him again. Down by six, Austin Reed and company here in the red zone now, and that's a big run. For you all in the comment section, seriously, start thinking right now. You get to see both teams. It's Louisiana Tech or Western Kentucky. Who should be a campus legend? And on fourth and one, he is dotting one up to river helms what a touchdown pass will the bulldogs respond down by one now he's going for it all and they could have had it all deflection interception it's mayhem out here when it comes to imperialism seriously anything goes and that fourth down stop will at least give louisiana tech a chance if you had one shot one opportunity this is everything you wanted would you capture it or let it slip? Hold the phone though. I think they captured it because now they're in the red zone and they can run off some clock. Decisions, decisions. I mean, they're clearly in field goal range, I think. Western Kentucky knows it. They're burning their timeouts and they get the stop. Fourth down, huge play. Does the kicker have the boot? He is going for a three-point shot. It's good. Strap in, folks. They're going for it all right here. Western Kentucky wants the win, so they're gonna have to hurry. Trying to hold on to that last timeout. They hurry back to the line. Gonna snap it off here. Need to get into field goal range and there's 18 seconds left they're chewing a lot of clock this is something that the ai has been historically bad at man it's really unfortunate and immersion breaking here because they needed to hustle and go for the win yet the ai says nah I'm good, I'll settle for one play, and that's game. See, Louisiana Tech evens the series. Game three in the best of three, and Western Kentucky's back to asserting their dominance. They're up by 14. And a little too close for comfort, back against the wall there. They're gonna punt it out and let Western Kentucky get it. Can Austin Reed conduct a drive here to get some additional insurance points? Austin Reed is cooking today. 450 passing yards, four touchdowns. I can see it now. Give him an offensive hero, campus legend, GG. No, I'm just kidding though. It's gonna take a whole team effort really to win at World War. And well, I'd be lying if I said that my stock was pretty high on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers in world domination. Sure, one can dream, and that's exactly what we'll hope for. For now, with under 30 seconds to go, it is way too late for Hank Bachmeyer and Louisiana Tech. Hilltoppers on top, they claim Australia. So no one is coming from down under this time. Western Kentucky established dominance in this imperialism episode and held on to it, so... Uh, we only have to see what comes next. So there we go. Make it official. Louisiana Tech's out of here. Western Kentucky on top. Spoiler alert for anyone else that hasn't seen any of the other campaigns thus far. Go check out any of those other Imperialism episodes. But I'm going to reveal the global map and see how we're looking to date. Just a couple more territories to go. As you can see, Western Kentucky is now slotted into Australia, and they got some big boys in front of them. But hey, this one was short and sweet. Conference USA would look a whole lot different in the next game, so we can get a more realistic imperialism battle with Sam Houston, Kennesaw State, Liberty, all that fun stuff. So stay tuned for new game content, and I'm excited to bring it to y'all. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like. I'll catch y'all in the flip.